reactions. Chemical reactions involve breaking and formation of bonds between atoms to form new substances. For example, hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium chloride and water. Bonds between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide break and form two new compounds, sodium chloride and water. Many chemical reactions occur in and around us. Let us discuss one such type of chemical reaction, combination reactions. Combination reactions A chemical reaction in which two or more substances combine to form a single product is called a combination reaction. When a mixture of iron and sulphur is heated, we get iron sulphide. This is a combination reaction. Another example is the formation of acid rain. Gases like carbon dioxide mix or combine with rainwater to give acid rain. You know that concrete is used in the construction of buildings. What is concrete? When water is added to a mixture of cement, sand and gravel and allowed to set, it imparts strength to the building. The substance so obtained is called concrete. This is also a combination reaction. Tricalcium aluminate is cement. Water combines with it to form concrete. During this reaction, heat is liberated. Do you know which substance is used to make artificial ceilings? Plaster of Paris, commonly known as POP, is used in making artificial ceilings. It is also used to make surgical bandages, in casting and moulding purposes in dentistry, in the making of statues, manufacture of crayons, etc. POP, when mixed with water, sets into a hard mass called gypsum. During this reaction, heat is liberated. This is a combination reaction. Gypsum is mainly used in the manufacture of cement. The formation of concrete and the manufacture of gypsum both involve liberation of heat. The reaction between iron and sulphur requires heat to form ferrous sulphide. During combination reactions, the reactants may liberate heat or require heat to form products. Let us perform some combination reactions to understand this better. Reaction of Calcium Oxide and Water Take a beaker half filled with water. Add a few pieces of quicklime or calcium oxide to water. As the reaction proceeds, the pieces of lime dissolve slowly. Now, let us touch the beaker and see. The beaker has become slightly warm. As calcium oxide dissolves in water, the temperature of water increases. Such reactions are called exothermic reactions. The reaction between lime and water gives calcium hydroxide and the release of heat. As two reactants give a single product, it is a combination reaction. Now, allow carbon dioxide gas to react with calcium hydroxide. What do you observe? The solution turns milky. Calcium hydroxide reacts with carbon dioxide to form a white precipitate of calcium carbonate and water. The formation of calcium carbonate makes the calcium hydroxide solution milky.
calcium hydroxide is also called as slaked lime. It is used for whitewashing of walls. Slaked lime reacts with the carbon dioxide in the air to form a thin layer of calcium carbonate on the walls. This layer, after three to four days, gives a shiny finish to the walls. Endothermic and exothermic reactions. Let us understand endothermic reactions. Potassium nitrate reacts with water to form a solution of potassium nitrate. In this reaction, there is absorption of heat by the reactants, hence the temperature of the solution falls. Reactions in which reactants require heat to form products are called endothermic reactions. Exothermic reactions. Sodium hydroxide reacts with water to form a solution of sodium hydroxide. In this reaction, heat is evolved. Hence, there is a rise in temperature. Reactions in which heat is evolved are called exothermic reactions. Formation of concrete and the manufacture of gypsum, which we discussed earlier, are both exothermic reactions as they involve liberation of heat. Is respiration an endothermic or exothermic reaction? Rice, potato, sago, etc. form a major source of carbohydrates in our diet. During digestion, these carbohydrates are broken down into glucose. When the process of respiration takes place, glucose combines with oxygen in our body and liberates heat and energy. It is this energy which is used by our body to carry out various activities. Thus, we can classify respiration as an exothermic reaction. Let us perform an activity to understand the next type of reactions, that is, decomposition reactions. Decomposition reactions Activity Take some sugar in a porcelain dish. Heat it. It turns brown in color. Heat it further. It becomes a black solid mass. Sugar has become charred to give this black solid mass. Sugar is a carbon compound. When sugar is heated, it loses all its water molecules and what remains is carbon. A single compound, decomposed or broke down to give two products. This is a decomposition reaction. In this reaction, sugar molecules are decomposed by the action of heat. Hence, this reaction is a thermal decomposition reaction. In the manufacture of cement, Calcium carbonate is heated at a temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius. At this stage, calcium carbonate decomposes to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide by the action of heat. Let us perform an activity to understand some more types of decomposition reactions. Activity Take some silver bromide on a watch glass. It is pale yellow in color. Now, place the watch glass in sunlight. Observe the color after some time. The pale yellow silver bromide has turned gray in color. Silver bromide has changed to metallic silver due to the action of sunlight. A similar observation can be made using silver chloride. Silver chloride, when exposed to sunlight, also changes to metallic silver. Silver bromide and silver chloride are used in photography during the process of developing of photograph negatives. This is because silver salts, when exposed to light, 
turn to metallic silver which block light and appear as the black part of the film negative. In laboratories, these compounds are stored in dark colored bottles to protect them from light. Can a decomposition reaction be carried out using electricity? Yes. Let us see whether water can be decomposed using electricity. Electrolytic decomposition of water. Take acidified water in a voltmeter. Pass electric current through it. Water splits or decomposes into hydrogen and oxygen. This decomposition is brought about by electrical energy. Hence, this reaction is known as electrolytic decomposition or electrolysis. Water can be decomposed into hydrogen and oxygen by the process of electrolytic decomposition. The electrolysis of water produces two volumes of hydrogen gas and one volume of oxygen gas. This shows that the water is a compound made up of two parts of hydrogen and one part of oxygen by volume. Displacement reactions Take a solution of copper sulphate in a beaker. Dip the zinc strip in the solution. Remove the strip after 5 minutes. What do you observe? The shiny strip has got a red coat of copper over it. The copper sulphate solution has also become lighter in color. What is the reaction? Zinc displaces copper in copper sulphate to form zinc sulphate. Such reactions are called displacement reactions. Reactions in which the more reactive element displaces the less reactive element from its compound are called displacement reactions. If a strip of iron is dipped in a solution of copper sulphate, a red coat of copper is seen on the iron strip and the blue-colored copper sulphate solution turns green. Iron being more reactive than copper can displace copper from its solution. Lead is another metal which is more reactive than copper and can displace it from copper sulphate. Let us discuss the next type of reactions, double displacement reactions. Double displacement reactions. Activity. Let us perform an activity to understand double displacement reactions. Take about 5 ml of copper chloride in a test tube. Add 5 ml of potassium iodide solution to it. Copper chloride reacts with potassium iodide to form insoluble copper iodide and potassium chloride. What do you observe? There is a brown insoluble substance formed. This insoluble substance is called a precipitate. So this reaction can also be called as a precipitation reaction. There are certain reactions in which ions of the reactants exchange places to form two new compounds. These are called double displacement reactions. Let us consider some more reactions. Reaction 1. Sodium chloride reacts with silver nitrate to form a white precipitate of silver chloride and a solution of sodium nitrate. The nitrate ion and the chloride ion exchange places to form the precipitate of silver chloride. Reaction 2 Barium sulphide reacts with zinc sulphate to form a white precipitate of barium sulphate and zinc sulphide. The sulphide ion and the sulphate ion exchange places to form insoluble barium sulphate. 
oxidation and reduction. Let us recall this experiment. Copper powder was heated to form copper oxide. In this reaction, copper gains oxygen to form copper oxide. What type of reaction was this? This was an oxidation reaction. Gaining of oxygen is an oxidation reaction. When hydrogen gas is passed over black copper oxide, the black copper oxide is converted to copper. What type of reaction is this? This is a reduction reaction. Copper oxide loses oxygen to form metallic copper. We can say that copper oxide is reduced to copper. You can observe that in this reaction, hydrogen combines with oxygen to form water. Hydrogen is oxidized to water. Here, reduction and oxidation reactions take place simultaneously. Such reactions are called oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions. Redox reactions let us consider some redox reactions. In a reaction between barium sulfate and carbon, barium loses its oxygen atoms to form barium sulfide and carbon gains oxygen to form carbon monoxide. In other words, barium sulfate is reduced to barium sulfide and carbon is oxidized to carbon monoxide. In the reaction between hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide, sulfur and water are formed. That is, hydrogen sulfide is oxidized to sulfur and sulfur dioxide is reduced to sulfur. When one reactant is oxidized, the other reactant is reduced. Here, reduction and oxidation reactions take place simultaneously. Such reactions are called oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions. We see the effects of several oxidation reactions taking place around us.